This is Steve. And this is Sean. Welcome to Acromedia's Half Five. So Steve, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to be talking about the commerce install. So you can install Drupal Commerce yourself. You can do me? it. Me? Even I could? Even I can. Oh. Nah. Wow. Mm, probably not me. But you could. And if you have some developer prowess, you could. Um, but it is there. You don't have to do any type of crazy spin up. Mm -hmm. um, we have a way for you to install Drupal Commerce mm -hmm. version 2. Yeah. As a little bit of a disclaimer, it might be a little much um, for you despite your you know, tech acumen or whatever. It does involve you know, a little tiny bit of almost programming. Okay. So, <laughs> so assuming you know how to program, yeah. then you're good to go. Yeah. If you can do anything on the command line and if that means anything to you, yes. then you can MS do it. MS prompt, I understand. Yeah, so yeah, maybe you're there. Maybe yeah. you could do it. Um, so what this is, I, um, what the install is, is it's more than just sort of installing commerce. It's a bit of a builder. And I'll give mm -hmm. a little bit of backstory to sort of explain that. Sure. Um, there's a commerce kickstart that exists for Drupal 7. Mm -hmm. um, and so what that is, um, is that's not just Drupal Commerce, the module, it's Drupal Commerce and sort of all the standard add-ons mm -hmm. put together into a little bit of a sort of mock store, right? So it mm -hmm. shows both the power of Commerce and a bunch of the examples because uh, Drupal, while it's very modular, it can be a bit daunting at the start. You install just Commerce and you're like, well, what about you know, uh, gift cards or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, well, that's an add-on module, right? But but if you're not familiar with all that, it can be very confusing, right? Yeah. You, you have to get all these pieces and put them together, and most of them are named well, and some of them are named less well and stuff like that, so it, it can take a bit of work. So Commerce Kickstart was meant to sort of solve that problem. Mm -hmm. um, the which one, it does. Which it does. Yeah. Yeah. And so it showed you a whole bunch to do, um, and it gave this good demo and stuff. What it had as a problem though, is it tried to do two things at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is it tried to be both this nice demo and also a base for you to build off of. Mm -hmm. And what it primarily was, was a nice demo, but everyone used it as a base. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't good for a base because it was too customized already. It was built into a demo. So you had all these things that you had to remove and you had to take away things that were customized. It's like if you took a site, you copied it, and then you turned it into a new site versus mm -hmm. sort of starting from a clean setup. And so that caused people a lot of problems. It caused uh, commerce guys lots of support issues where people would, I can't do this, I'm having trouble with that. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, you're, it's because you're, you, you're building off the demo and you need to build clean or whatever. Mm -hmm. Plus there was lots of stuff you would have to delete in there and everything, so it had this problem. So what we decided to do for Drupal 8 was to do two separate things, mm -hmm. to have a demo and to have um, a kickstart, which was truly a kickstart to, as a developer, to assist you in getting started with this. Um, so it does not have any of the demo features which are handled separately. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and so it handles Drupal Commerce and then all the sort of normal add-ons you're going to add. And we tried to make it a little bit smarter. So uh, Kickstart originally um, for Drupal 7 was all, you got all the add-ons, mm -hmm. you know, and that was it. You, you, you couldn't sort of pick and choose. You got everything and you had to kind of remove it later. Whereas we have basically a bit of a builder that we've built where you can sort of pick commerce. Basically a builder? Can, it is a full builder. I think. I guess, I guess it is a builder. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly a builder. That's yeah. really exactly what it is. It builds a, an install <laughs> file for you to install. Yes. So that's sort of exactly. Thank you. I yeah, so hate, would hate to be technically incorrect, which I was there. <laughs> Um, so starting at the top, how do you actually use the builder? Yeah, so it's a fairly linear process. You basically go down um, and you select, we have some basics that you start with, you know, uh, what region are you starting with? Do you have any um, Drupal base installs you want to use? Um, you know, like there's other stuff like um, uh, Lightning or OpenEDU, there's mm -hmm. these other sort of Drupal installs and you can pair commerce with any of them, right? So we give you that sort of choice right at the start. We say, hey, do you want to pick one of these other bases that, you know, supports um, uh, content publishing or supports uh, educational stuff and you want to pair commerce with it? Um, because that might be quite common use case. Um, and then we do regional stuff. So like if you say, hey, I'm based in North America, we're not going to show you any of the European or you know Asian only options. You know you don't need to know about the Royal Mail and if we have an integration with them because if you only ship in North America, it doesn't matter, right? Of course you can pick international and you get all the options. And then as we go down from there, um, we basically go through the different sections. Mm -hmm. What do you need for payments? What do you need for shipping? 
um, you know, what do you need for all these different uh, sections? And it'll grow and expand as commerce grows. And it lets you sort of pick and build these options. Um, but you don't have to go and Google module names and, and take them and put them together and stuff. You just can sort of pick. It's nice little buttons mm -hmm. as you go along and everything. And we've, we've tried to sort of curate the list a little so it's not everything. It's most of the stuff that we think is either pretty required or is uh, reliable at this point. You know, it's, it's not some sort of uh, fringe stuff. You know, and then we'll sort of adjust that over time. Um, and then at the bottom, uh, basically you say, okay, I'm good. Let's go. Let's build this. Um, and it builds like you so correctly corrected me on. Um, I've contributed a lot to this episode uh, so far. An install file for you. So it, it uh, uses, for a technical term, it uses Composer. It gives you a little file that you download. You go in there and you run Composer install. And it, it grabs all the modules for you. It sets up the profiles. And, and it gives you an install file. Uh, it actually it downloads and builds all the Drupal files for you. Including um, the base that you chose. Including the base that you chose. So it'll, it'll get the open EDU mm -hmm. for you or whatever. It will put all the modules together. It will put that all into a file or like into basically a set of instructions. Mm -hmm. You run those. It'll set that all up on your website. And then if you just go to the address of your website, you will be presented with a Drupal install page. Awesome. And you can go there, but it'll have all these options and you can follow the custom install process depending on which options you've picked and stuff. When you were envisioning this um, with, your, with your install brainchild, um, you know, what, what have you really accomplished here? Like what, what is the thing that people should be proud of when they go to like go to use this? Are they saving time? Are they saving, is, it a, is it a complicated thing in terms of like they wouldn't know how to set it up? Like really, what are you benefiting here from? It's a couple of those. It saves you a bit of time um, and... Uh, for people who, it helps get people who aren't familiar with the commerce ecosystem going, okay. which was the biggest hurdle that it was trying to solve, is if you don't know about all these options, mm -hmm. you take Drupal Commerce, you install it, and then you're missing all these things, and then you kind of get stuck, and you sort of give up, or you really have to struggle. Whereas this gets you basically much farther ahead in the process. You have all the normal bits you can need. Mm -hmm. Now you just have to customize, you know, you just have to do these little extra stuff. Whereas, unless you unless you were part of the commerce ecosystem, you didn't know any of this, right? And yeah. so you you needed you know months of following along and talking and asking to people and being part of it to get up to this phase. And so we're trying to cut that part out, um, which we kind of did in one, but to also have it a nice, clean environment that is a good starting pace, place for a developer. Well, one of the things you didn't talk about though is that while you're building it, you can also choose whether or not you want a clean install or whether or not you want demo content in it. So you can actually install it like it is a demo to a certain extent. If you want some content to get you started, is yes. that not an option you and, can and have? And it's a little different than the demo. This is, um, we call it demo content, but it should also be if you want a couple of examples. Mm -hmm. So you want, here's a product set up. So look at it, you can see what a nicely configured product looks like. You know, It's not 20 and it's not set up into a whole store. It's little bits to give you an example. You know, here's a sample tax item. Here's a sample shipping method, that kind of and stuff. And that's generally for mm -hmm. um, people with maybe lower programming skills or they need a little bit of extra help to get started. It does give them yeah, that, or that often next step. Just not uh, familiar with commerce or Drupal, so they might not yeah. sort of know the conventions of you know adding content and content types and things like that. So it mm -hmm. gives them some stuff to start with. Disclaimer: that part of the functionality is not in yet. Mm -hmm. um, we need to uh, some more functionality for Drupal core needs to be done for us to fully uh, facilitate that function. Who should we be calling so. out regarding that? Um, actually, most of that is Alex Potts' problem, okay. um, but we employ him now, so it's our problem. Oh. Well, that wasn't um, very helpful then. I know. It's sort of come round again. It was just <laughs> his problem, but now it's our problem again. Okay. Well, so. at least we can fix that problem. Yes. So mm -hmm. by the time you probably watch this, give us a little bit of time, and then you'll be able yeah. to use that. It's a difficult problem, so you know, give us a bit of time. But it's still useful with a lot of that. We also have... Um, pre-set up migrations. Yes, that's right. So you can um, add those on, um, and you'll have the stuff to migrate from an Ubercart site, a commerce site on Drupal 7. Um, in the future, we will have uh, Magento and WooCommerce ones mm -hmm. um, available as well. Do we well. have Shopify on that list? And that's uh, we, it's, we will in the future. And right. some of those we've listed, and we've sort of grayed them out and said you know, that they'll be coming just to sort of show you that some of the features are available. We're still very new in our Commerce 2 lifecycle. We only launched uh, in September, so. Um, we're still adding all these extra bits and pieces, although it's, you'll see quite a few options already even if you go there. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So um, today's episodes, what's the two long didn't read? Uh, if you're building a commerce site, um, use Commerce Kickstart. It's the best and easiest way to get installed, and it won't give you any extra junk at all. There is no advantage whatsoever from doing it manually. Awesome. Subscribe to our channel if that's mm -hmm. okay with you. 
as well as ask Sean as many questions as you can, whether that be Twitter, whether that be putting the questions down below. Comment mm -hmm. about how much you love the installer. How about you try to use the installer? That would be nice too. Mm -hmm. If you have any problems with the installer, you can give feedback, bugs mm -hmm. and stuff. There is a link in there. Um, or if you th see stuff that we're missing and you would like us to add. Um, also, you can follow us on Facebook. Um, you can read our blog at acromedia.com and you can follow me on Twitter. And ask him as many questions on Twitter. Please don't. <laughs>